They stand like silent sentinels with their weathered trunks and sinewy arms, guarding the gates to the beauty that lies within. They are the live oak trees of Jefferson Island, survivors of countless storms and hurricanes, their toughness concealed by the graceful elegance of the Spanish moss. Enjoy the beauty. Learn the history. Rest in the quiet peacefulness that is Jefferson Island. Jefferson Island, as it's known today, has had many names since the Spanish land grants of the late 18th century. When the actor Joseph Jefferson purchased the plantation from Faustin Dupuy for a hunting lodge in 1869, it was known as Orange Island. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. You see, Jefferson Island isn't really an island at all. It's actually a pushed up part of ground created by salt deposits from the Luan salt bed. These accumulated during the Jurassic period nearly 160 million years ago. These huge underground columns of salt, called salt domes, grew up over the millennia to form five islands, which are equal distance apart and include the most northern Jefferson Island, Avery Island, Weeks Island, and Cote Blanche. Because of their unique geology, they rise up over the otherwise flat terrain of the South Louisiana Bayou Country. Ah, South Louisiana, a unique area known for its native beauty, wonderful food, music, and hospitality. Jefferson Island stands like a beautifully polished gemstone, raised high above the surrounding area. Joseph Jefferson, a prominent stage actor of his time, was looking for a warm winter haven for his family, and while working in New Orleans, found out that this unique property was available and bought it for a place to hunt and fish. Adding to the island's mystique, it was believed that the pirate Jean Lafitte buried some treasure on the island, and subsequently a chest of gold and silver coins were discovered near the twin live oaks in the yard of the mansion. Jefferson was best known for his dramatic portrayal of Washington Irving's fictional Dutch farmer Rip Van Winkle, who went deep into the woods and fell asleep, only to awaken 20 years later to find his children grown and his wife dead. Jefferson believed the play would be successful because it was a uniquely American story. He traveled around the country to sold out audiences in his railway car with his acting troupe. This success allowed him to buy homes in Massachusetts and Florida and in this lovely yet still wild South Louisiana paradise. Shortly after purchasing the property, approximately 3,600 acres for $28,000, Jefferson contracted with George Francis, an architect from New Iberia, to build his home. The mansion was constructed to overlook picturesque Lake Pinure. The stately home had a large central cupola as a major yet functional design element for letting light in and heat out. Many of the building materials, such as native cypress lumber for the home, came from the surrounding area and were milled in New Iberia. Jefferson loved his large family. They threw many wonderful parties and social events here on the island. Over the years, Jefferson made many influential friends via his career as a famous stage actor. These folks often came to Jefferson Island to enjoy the hospitality for which he was so well known. One prominent visitor was then President Grover Cleveland, who enjoyed napping under a huge live oak tree, which was subsequently named in his honor.
After the famous actor passed away in 1905, the home was inherited by his descendants. In 1917, a Kentucky businessman, John Lyle Bayless Sr., came to South Louisiana to do some hunting with his friend E.A. McElhaney from Avery Island. It was on this trip that Bayless discovered Jefferson Island was for sale. Mr. Bayless Sr., with Paul Jones, a Kentucky business associate, along with Mr. McElhaney, formed a partnership to purchase the property initially as a hunting preserve. The Kentucky group soon found another hidden treasure under the island, and that was the salt. The salt under Jefferson Island was found to be some of the purest salt in the world, so a mine was soon erected and became a highly profitable business for decades to come, producing 1.5 million tons of salt a year. Later, the property was owned by John Lyle Bayless Jr., and he began developing the gardens around the home. He named the gardens Rip Van Winkle Gardens, in memory of the famous actor for whom the island was named. Mr. Bayless won many national awards for the camellia flowers he grew on the island, expanding the gardens in the 1960s with the hiring of Jeffrey Wakefield, a master English gardener. Mr. Wakefield imported plants from around the world, and he designed and built a lovely English garden in South Louisiana. In 1969, a young University of Southwestern Louisiana student, Mike Richard, came to work as an intern for Mr. Wakefield, and subsequently spent decades as the director of horticulture for the Rip Van Winkle Gardens. On November 20th of 1980, a day that started like any other on this island paradise, soon turned to tragedy. All of a sudden, the earth shook. Waters of the Dalcom Canal started flowing in reverse, north instead of south, and a whirlpool developed in Lake Penure created a 150-foot waterfall, something unheard of in Louisiana. 65 acres of magnificent woodlands, including 300-year-old live oaks, greenhouses, barges, a tugboat, an oil drilling rig, and Mr. Bayless's recently constructed home were destroyed and sucked into the giant hole. Although there were over 50 miners underground at the time of the tragedy, miraculously, no one was killed. When the dust, or should I say the water, settled, it was concluded by many experts that an oil company had punctured the salt mine, which caused the water from the lake to be sucked into the mine, causing the tragedy. Having no close relatives, Mr. Bayless Jr. formed a foundation to own and manage the property in perpetuity. After Mr. Bayless's death, the gardens on Jefferson Island were sold. Later, the Jefferson home and property were bought by the adjacent Live Oak Nursery, which is principally owned by the longtime Jefferson Island Director of Horticulture, Mike Richard. Mike Richard and his associates rebuilt the gardens, restored the home, reopened the gardens to the public, and is responsible for the beauty you see here today. The house and adjacent property are currently the home of the Joseph Jefferson Home, Rip Van Winkle Gardens, Rip's Rookery, Live Oak Gardens and Nursery, Cafe Jefferson, and the Bayless Center. The Bayless Center is booked year-round with events such as wedding receptions. Weddings are often performed at sunset overlooking Lake Penure. Thousands come each year to tour the bountiful gardens, the stately mansion, and just enjoy a quiet respite from our busy world. Relax on the porch. Stop and smell the flowers. Marvel at the pink roseate spoonbills. Or just watch the Spanish moss flutter in the breeze while the sun sets on Lake Penure. There really is something for everyone at Jefferson Island. Enjoy.